Welcome back students who are taking financial accounting. Um, in this series of videos we are going to be working on the assigned homework problems uh, from the digital study guide that were for Appendix B which is a, uh, about the time value of money. Um, remember you know when you're looking at your uh, student community page you're looking at chapter 7 which dealt with cash and receivables um, and we decided at this point in time um, to include the uh, appendix for 7a which is uh, about petty cash and also you know that that immediately comes after chapter 7 but this appendix B is at the end of the textbook and we decided to include it here because of the notes receivable um, you need to be able to calculate interest on your notes and so we thought this would be the appropriate time that we would cover the material for Appendix B um, in this particular lesson. So um, when you're looking at these here exercises, you know, they're listed. Normally we would have done the short exercises, then the exercises and the problems in the chapter itself um, at first. And then we probably would have done the uh, uh, Appendix 7A second. Um, and then tossing in this here uh, time value of money appendix B at the, the very end that didn't seem like uh, an appropriate thing to do because you can't calculate a note um, if you don't know how to do the time value of money uh, so we decided to put these exercises first so that's why you're seeing appendix B here the time value of money first for, before you actually start working on the chapter 7 stuff so with that said um, let's go on here. Um, note, accounting is about understanding the concepts and then applying that understanding to the situation at hand. If you get the application aspect wrong, that is one thing and is easily remedied by watching someone else uh, work the problem. However, if you don't understand the concepts, that is a whole other thing. Watching a problem worked out will not help you if you do not understand the underlying concepts. Go back and study the text material again and watch the theory videos. If you still don't understand the concepts, then either email or telephone an instructor to get help with that understanding. Okay, so let's move on. Now, on this next slide here, um, you know, in the appendix, you're going to have exhibits B1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, exhibits B1 and B2 are a the factor chart for... Um, using the time value of money as you can see let me get a pen here get my pen come on pen okay as you can see here uh, this is the future value of a dollar and this here is a future value of an annuity all right um, you know these are just a partial representation of the the charts themselves um, if you had you know these are actually in the textbook and these are probably all you need but remember, you had a more complete set in the math for business and app, math for business and finance or math applications, and when you uh, use that textbook, and as part of that textbook, you actually had a business math handbook that gave uh, a much more um, comprehensive uh, set of uh, charts. Although they did look, you know, somewhat different, but the factors are all the same. Okay, it's just the way the information is arranged. But like I said, these here are just condensed uh, uh, factor tables. And, uh, you know, you could be able to just use these. You don't need to go looking for something that's, you know, outside of the, the book itself. So these are the future value uh, tables. And the next slide here is the present value tables. You know, the present value of a dollar and the present value of an annuity. Okay. And remember, an annuity is nothing more than a payment. All right. So when you're dealing with um, lump sums, you are going to be using the uh, future and present value of a dollar. But if you're going to have payments like monthly payments, okay, then you're going to be using the present value of an annuity table or the future value of an annuity table. Now I've reproduced these here uh, exhibits because as we do the problems, um, I'm just going to bounce back and forth. Since there's only three problems, I'm going to bounce back and forth between uh, these slides as appropriate in order to get the factors that are that I need and remember I'm working these out as if I was working them out as a student okay 
so um, you know it's not like I have any magic wand here or whatever have you um, I'm looking at the problem you know I'm gonna read it work through it and if my answer is right or wrong I'm gonna check it with what's in the text what's with what is in the solution manual if I get it wrong I want to try to figure out why I had gotten it wrong and in your case here I mean that's what if I were a student that's what I'd be doing and if I had gotten it wrong and I couldn't figure it out, then I'd be watching this video to see how it's worked out, you know, um, correctly. So with that said, let me start working on uh, exercise EB-1A. It says presented next are four independent situations related to future and present values. Requirement, using the tables in the appendix, calculate the future and present value of each item as needed. So A here is 8,000 is deposited in the bank today for a period of six years. Calculate the value of 8,000 at the end of six years, assuming it earns 7% interest. Um, remember, I'm a big fan of a timeline. And a timeline, well, I I'm, I'm said remember. I had covered this back in the math for business um, and math applications uh, videos that are, you can view those on the, uh, by going on the student community under academic groups and then business group and then the math section on the left hand side um, you know I had uh, talked about that earlier in the very first uh, theory video so uh, I'm not going to be covering it all over again all right but as I work through the problems um, you know I'm going to just use the tools and do the things that I normally do and so some of this stuff here, like as I said, I, I said, remember, I'm a big fan of using the timeline. Well, what's a timeline? Well, basically, it's a number line. And what I do is, um, you know, I label the line so that I can visually see what's going on in, the, in a problem here. So it says here for A, it says 8,000 is deposited in the bank today. So 8,000 is deposited in the bank today for a period of six years. So this is one year, two years, three years, four years, five years. This here is year number six. Calculate the value of $8,000 at the end of six years, assuming it earns 7% interest. So we want to know what this 8,000 looks like at the end of year six. So since I'm only depositing $8,000 once, that is a lump sum, right? And I want to know what, you know, since that's today and I want to know what it is in the, you know, six years from now, the future. So I want to know what the future value of a lump sum is. And so I'm going to use the future value, um, the future value table, uh, future value of a dollar of a dollar table okay so I come up and I bounce up here to my future value of a dollar table and it was for seven percent interest and for six periods right here so when I cross-reference that I get a factor of 1.501 so I take my <coughs> excuse me I take my 8,000 and I multiply it by 1.501 and that gives me 1,000, I mean 12,000 and eight dollars when I multiply that out. And that's all there is to it for that particular problem. It's just that simple. You, you, you look at the information that's given, you decide what table you need to use, you find the factor and you multiply it by you know that amount. So I'm going to erase this. I'm only going to use this one slide here. So go back and pause the video if you have to copy it back and copy it down, right? Because um, I'm just going to keep on erasing as I do each and every problem. All right? How much must you invest today in order to receive $3,000 at the end of each year for the next four years, assuming you can earn 12% interest? Okay. All right. So how much uh, really must you invest today in order to receive uh, $3,000 at the end of each year for the next four years. This is one, two, three, four years. 
and notice it's at the end of each year so each year is a is a payment so if I'm looking at a payment I want to be looking at an annuities table right um, assuming you can earn 12% interest okay so now the question is am I using a present value table or am I using a future value table well I, I need to know how much I must invest today okay and today is the present so I want to be looking at the present value of an annuity table right 12 percent interest for four uh, years so I jump up here to my present value of an annuity table. Let me erase this. And I'm going to look at um, let's see here. I'm going to look at 12% uh, interest and I'm looking at four years. right? And so when I cross-reference that I get 3.037. So I take my $3,000 and I multiply it by 3.037 and that means I have to invest $9,111 when I do the math in order to receive a $3,000. I have to invest $9,111 today, present value, in order for me to receive $3,000 a year over the next four years at 12% interest. And that's the end of that problem. Okay, pause the video if you have to. I'm erasing it. Okay, next one. Let's see? All right, 4,500 will be invested at the end of each year for a period of three years. One, two, three. All right. So this is today. And I'm going to invest it 4,500 at the end of each year. For a period of three years. This is one, two, three. All right. Calculate the value of the investment at the end of three years, assuming it earns 10%. Okay, so we're, we want to know how much we're going to have uh, we're going to, uh, as a total at the end of the three years. All right, so we know we're going to invest at the end of each year, so that's an annuity, right? We're going to make a payment at the end of each year. So we're going to look at the annuity table. And if it's today, but we want to know how much it is three years from now, okay, you know, that's a future value, right? So we look at the future value of an annuity table. And we're looking at 10%. So let me erase this here. No. And so we're looking here at the future value of an annuity table. And we're looking at 10%. And it was for a period of three years. So I cross-reference that. And I get a factor of 3.310. So I have my $4,500 that I'm going to invest each year times the 3.310 and that gives me fourteen thousand eight hundred and ninety five dollars which is how much I'll have at the end of the third year um, you know the thought while I was just writing that down that uh, you know as far as the factors are concerned I mean it, it will benefit you if, uh, I think if you go out to the student community um, so I'm you know pause the video and write this stuff down as I talk um, but I think it will benefit you to go back to the videos on the student community under academic groups, then the business group, um, and then look at the math for business slash application section and uh, watch those videos that have to deal with uh, uh, the time value of money. And the reason why I say that is because when you, you know, as I looked up this factor, okay, um, 3.310, you know, there's a, a a little bit of a history as to how these these factors are arrived at and how they're actually used. So I think it you know it helps to know that little bit of a history, um, so that you know and if you're just plucking numbers off of a table and you don't know 
you know the underlying concepts for why those numbers are what they are you know you, you know you always have this feeling of unease because you don't know and you know uh, if you go back and you watch those videos and you understand how the factors came about um, it makes a little bit more sense to you as to you know what you're doing and why you're doing it okay All right so the last one here it says the company you work for wants to purchase a new piece of equipment that is estimated to cost $29,000 10 years from now. So if I have a timeline and this is 10 years and it costs 29,000 and this is today, right? Um, how much must they invest today? Right? We want to know how much they must invest today in order to have the 29,000 necessary to purchase the equipment if they can earn 6% of interest. All right, so um, we need, a, you know, 29,000. So that's a lump sum. All right, so the lump sum is the 29,000. All right, so if I'm looking at a lump sum, I'm looking at the either present or future value of a dollar table. And since we need that in the future, all right, and we want to know how much we need to invest today, um, we need to know what the present value of a dollar is today using that, that particular table um, in order to be able to uh, calculate, you know, um, how much we need for, to have 29,000 10 years from now at 6%. So I have 10 years at 6%. Right, so I come up here to the present value table and I have 6% and 10 years, right, is the period of time, and I cross-reference it, and I need the factor 0 0.558. So if I take the 29,000 times 0 0.558, I, and I multiply that out, I need to invest $16,182 today. If I put that amount in the bank today, and it collects 6% interest over the 10 years, I'll end up with $29,000 in my bank account. Okay, so that's it for this particular problem. And um, I'm going to pause the video here and do the next problem in the next video. You know, if you have any questions, you know, after seeing this, remember that first slide. Um, let me bounce up there. There it is. You know, it's about understanding the concepts and applying that understanding. If you don't understand the con the concepts, then, you know, uh, feel free to contact an instructor. I mean, that's what we're here for. All right, see you in the next video.